Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. So this is a, a first look unboxing of the ASUS ROG Strix GL531GU. Um, HID Evolution were kind enough to send me it. And it, uh, you can start, it starts off with, um, with a, a 9 a i5 9300H, even a GTX 1650. And you can get it all the way up to like an i7 9750H like I've got here up to an RTX 2070. But this has a 1660 uh, Ti in it. And it, uh, that starts at about, about uh, $1,400. Now, of course, HID um, have uh, repainted this with liquid metal on the CPU and the GPU. And it has uh, 512 gigabytes of, uh, of uh, SSD storage, NVMe storage. And it's got an open uh, two and a half inch bay as well. Uh, it's got uh, two sticks of RAM, eight gigs. Uh, that's make it, making it 16 gigs total. And it's a 120 Hertz panel, IPS panel. So let's have a look at it. Now, one thing I always like about uh, these Asus laptops, the packaging is pretty nice. You know, you've got a nice box and you've got nice packaging inside. So let's have a look what we've got in here first. They send us a, a SATA cable and screws for the uh, two and a half inch drive, which is nice. And of course, documentation. And, and here we have a 230 watt power brick. Now, underneath we got also they send you a hat, you know, an Asus ROG gaming hat, and also a controller, a gamepad. So that's not too bad, is it? All that for free. So there's some nice little extras. Now it's all plastic build. You know, which is still okay. You know, I mean, I, yeah, I like the aluminum build of like the Zephyrus S and that, but uh, you know, the, the lid here, you can see the two tone pattern with the diagonal stripe here. And it, here's the ROG symbol, and it doesn't look as if this actually lights up at all. In fact, you'll notice here they have a, a cut out here in the hinge to allow airflow to get through there, which is nice. You do have a a hinge forward design and you'll notice here the air intakes for cooling those uh, heat sinks at the back there I do like that so the keyboard deck is made out of plastic as is the Windows Precision touchpad and the uh, separate mouse buttons now the trackpad is Windows Precision that works well and you'll notice on the keyboard deck you know there's a, a diagonal a brush pattern there and up this side there's actually a vertical brush pattern mirroring what's on the lid and on the right, you do have a separate, uh, you know, the delete key, home, page up, end and print screen there. And at the top, you do have some uh, separate buttons. Good to see uh, volume control, microphone, the armory crate button there. And interestingly, what looks like a fan button is not a fan button, but it alternates between balanced, turbo, and, and silent modes. So interestingly, on battery, and you press the uh, the fan button, switching between silent and balance mode also dims and brightens the screen between 40% and 100%. Now the RGB lighting on the keyboard is not per key and it's not in four zones on my model. I believe the highest uh, SKUs do have four zones, but mine is just uh, the, the one zone. But you can change different patterns. For example, you've got breathing here. You can have static, you can do strobing, you can have it go into music or like a rainbow pattern. And of course, you can change whatever color and speed that you want. And this also applies to the nice RGB lighting around the sides. All right, so let's look at its weight. About five pounds, five ounces. And with a 230 watt power brick, seven pounds. So here we're looking at the ports on the left hand side, actually comparing it to the uh, Wi-Fi 40 here on top. So you'll notice that most of the ports for the uh, Asus ROG Strix G here is on the left hand side. No air vent here, but you do have three USB 3.1 uh, Gen 1 Type A ports. Uh, you have a combo headphone microphone jack and you have the speaker grill here. Now around the back, You've got some good ports as well. Not as many as the, uh, the Wi-Fi 40 here, but you still have the Ethernet port, you have the HDMI port, 
and a USB-C port. No Thunderbolt 3 port, but just USB-C and the power connector. And here on the right hand side, no port at all. Um, speaker grill and of course the air exhaust for the GPU here on the right. Here's a comparison between the screens on the Lenovo Y740 and the Asus ROG Strix G. Of course, 419 uh, nits I measured on the Y740. That's their, their 500 nit display on their website. 250 nits seemingly on the uh, Asus here. Uh, and you can tell, sure, difference in brightness and the color accuracy on the ROG is not quite up to snuff compared to the Y740 without a doubt. And one thing you'll notice, of course, we all have thin bezels nowadays, but there's no webcam at all, not even at the bottom of the panel. Um, so bear that in mind, you'll need an external device for that. So there we have the ROG Strix um, on the left hand side and the Y740 on the right. And the backlight bleed, you know, it's bad on both really. And there's a little bit uh, on the top left hand corner, I suppose, in the ASUS. And that's only a 250 nit display, so it's still not too bad. Let's do a quick speaker comparison between the ASUS and the uh, Lenovo Y740. Uh, so let's have a look. Here is the ASUS. It's about 74 decibels. The ASUS sounds very good though. And the Y740. I give the nod to the ASUS there. Do sound full of some nice bass and perhaps slightly louder too. So getting inside, nice and easy, Phillips head screws. And there you can see the air intakes. Okay, but be careful when you're taking it off because you do have the cables here for the RGB lighting which goes around the sides. Uh, here we have a 66 watt hour battery which I estimate would be uh, good for around about five to six hours. Um, we've got the speakers here, fairly nice large speakers of course fire out the sides. A two and a half inch bay which ASUS supply and so you sat the cable and screws, the M.2 slot and underneath you have the Wi-Fi card. Two sticks of RAM here, but if you buy from the store, be careful because the base configuration may actually only have one stick, so check before you buy. Nice big copper heat pipes, I do like that. The CPU here, GPU. You do have two shared heat pipes here, and have a, a separate one here for the GPU. And of course, you've got another heat pipe here. Now, I, what I do like, the very big heat sinks. 0.1 millimeter thick fin, so large surface area. And of course here you've got the air intakes through the, the hinge to help with the cooling here. 12 volt fans, I do like the look of the cooling, I like it. So as you can see, the PL1 is 70 watts and the PL2 is 90 watts by default. So let's run a handbrake test followed by handbrake and times by to see what it all settles down to and what the temperatures are at. So after 10 minutes of handbrake, the uh, CPU package is running around about 68 uh, to 70 watts. And the uh, temperature, uh, looking at around about uh, 75 degrees uh, Celsius. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it, really? Uh, peaking at uh, 78. The clock speed um, is uh, running around about uh, 3,700 megahertz as well. All right, so with handbrake and time spy going at the same time, we're still at 3,700 megahertz, still at around 77 degrees. It peaked at 84. It's perfect, isn't it? That's very good. And uh, running around about 70 watts. Uh, so very impressive. So playing Battlefield 5, it's running nice and cool. 81 degrees C. Oh. Uh, it's GPU 70 degrees C, holding about uh, 50 watts. Um, so yeah, looks good. All right, so there you have it. Quick first look. Put in the comments below what you'd like me to test. And uh, thank you again for watching. See you next time. Bye.